Hey everybody, thanks for joining us again for another Web Marketing Insights podcast here from Gulo. Uh, with me, Chris Bonney, is Zach Wilson, as always. Hi Zach, how are you doing today? Good afternoon, great. Thank you. Good, good. We've got a really cool topic today, Zach. Um, we're calling it the anatomy of the homepage. And it might not be what you think for those listening. Uh, so stick around to see what we have to say about it because um, there's some really cool uh, philosophical and sort of conceptual ideas that everybody's homepage, regardless of what kind of business you're in, should probably follow or think about. And if you're not thinking about these things, you really should be. And Zach, I'll just jump right in to content here is that the question can be made or the, the argument could be made that maybe for some people, Google is actually your homepage, right? And so what do we mean by that? Well, um, if you're familiar with the Google's uh, search results page, on the right-hand side of the page, there can be what they call a knowledge panel. And that can sometimes draw information about your who you are, about your company, about your product, whatever it may be, and actually tell everybody everything they need to know about it uh, and then lead them to maybe not click through to your homepage from that. If it's something that has to do with that might even be represented somewhere on Wikipedia, that's likely to maybe answer somebody's question that your homepage was hoping to answer for somebody. So what we need to do is think about not only what are we trying to convey on our homepage, but where is that information that we're putting on our homepage, where else is it represented to our future users or potential users or returning users that they might be finding elsewhere and then not getting to our homepage. So when we look at our analytics and we say, gosh, why is traffic to our homepage going down? Uh, it could very well be because they don't have to click past their search results on Google, right? So that's really a big thing to think about. And we can talk a little more about that as we go along, but that's the one thing that as we were talking about this podcast and what we wanted to mention that really jumped out at me that that's something to really think about how can we make sure that people are getting what they need right on that search results page or making sure they're they're not getting what they need and click through to us right so right. a big big thing to think about something else that comes to mind is that there isn't just one home page on your website anymore right there's multiple ones so uh you want to just kind of jump in on that one, Zach, and just talk a little bit about what we mean when we, when we say that. Yeah. So as part of the, your search and search presence, you know, some of the things that we're trying to accomplish and we're trying to get people to appear as is, is, are these either long tail content or top level landing pages, the, that, are related to this long tail content. And so what's happening now, uh, as we see it, and you just alluded is it, it, the, the organic traffic is uh, that you're seeing, that you're likely seeing on your site is not as heavily tilted as it used to be towards the homepage. And this is a product of the evolution of Google and Google finding the, 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 the valuable content and the valuable pages on your site that your visitors are engaging with and interacting with. And a part of, I mean, a part of that, which I wanted, I, th I thought you were going to say uh, was uh, also was, um, you know, that, that the, 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 the holy grail of, of that people are seeking for in search now is, all, are, is also um, a snippet, keyword snippets, right? And a that, featured snippet, featured yeah. snippet mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah. And, um, you know, and that's, as you're, as you're alluding, like that people likely aren't even coming to your site anymore. If you optimize something well enough, um, yes. that they get their answer, <laughs> they get their answer right there. And there's no, right, right. there's no click through, which is uh, sort of a catch 22 because we want to provide people with value and answers. But if we provide too, or too good of an answer, there's a possibility yes. that they might not even click through to, to, to get more sure. information and then we can't, you know, capitalize on that. So, um, yeah. but, but back to the landing, but back to the landing page, uh, part of it, you know, and, and I think that to hand it back to you is that we, we, we look at, we, we look at sites from a technical SEO perspective and we want sites to be very 
very flat now, right? So you've got your homepage and you've got your sort of first tier, which typically are your landing pages and a lot of your value proposition of who you are and what you do as yeah. an organization or a company. And then, you know, below that is your, your more long tail content and your ancillary pages. And we're, t we treat the, the first level, the homepage and the second level as, as an agency, we treat these the same. These are, these are, are equal yeah. weight. So what's happening now as, as a, as an agency mm -hmm. that, that focuses on conversions and um, results is we want everything in the, the second tier to be as 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 effective and well designed and well organized as things in the first peer, tier and and what we've sort of devised and this is not brain surgery a lot of people there do this but is this this formula which is you know sort of 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 telling your uh, telling your story um, and this anatomy. The anatomy of the homepage, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, and this is something that we think about and talk about uh, as from organizationally and structure pages. Again, homepages and landing pages in this in this fashion, so that your your get it once your user gets there, you're not beating them over the head with the wrong thing. As you've you've you, they get there and you're allowed to you're you're giving your user the opportunity to slowly consume whether it's mm -hmm. visually or written these parts or panes of the page and then you know finally bam at the end here's actually what i want from you right but like as you said yeah. earlier offline is you know the page is not about you the the company it's yeah. about your cut it's about your customers and talking mm. about your customers mm -hmm. so um, yeah. So, I mean, let's take that a step further. So if we have to value pages on our site, I mean, it, it almost feels like to me that it, we used to really think about the home pages, the top of the, you know, the hierarchy, and then there's a secondary level of pages. And what you're saying is, well, let's go ahead and drop that homepage down into that row almost. Right. Yeah. And not much. put and, and have that then just, if we're just calling them landing pages, right. Topical whatever, you know, topic or concept are behind those pages. Your homepage is just one of seven, one of eight, one of 15, whatever it is. And you want to understand what the goal of that page is, why people are coming to that site page, how you're optimizing that page and not put the idea that every single con constituent on your staff or your customers or your membership or whatever it might be has to be served by this home page because that's what we see right a very centrist right. approach to the home page and the reason is is because we see it at the top of the hierarchy right if we drop that down and say actually it's just one of seven pages those other six are just as important because they're about the really important topics or concepts or or you know areas of our organization whatever it might be i think that devaluing it actually gives it the opportunity to be more valuable because it's more focused yeah I agree, hundred percent. How many landing pages is too many? If we're talking oh, about them as other other home pages, because that's what I'm looking at it like. You can call your home page a home page, but if we're going to drop it down and equalize it with the other seven, they're all home pages, you know, right? So, is there right. a point where you go, okay, forty five is too many? You know, that's <laughs> a little much for the top tier. How do you, how does somebody know? Is, is it yeah. specific or is it, is there something that SEO would dictate or does it seem like maybe if you had 50,000 pages, you might have 50 landing pages? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I'm, I, I haven't really thought about that. And from our perspective, from, you know, client to client, it, it's, it varies so dramatically on, yeah. On, yeah. on the customer. I mean, we, we're working on something right now that's you know they they're they went from a 20 page site to a two page site right like the, yeah. the two the two landing pages and it's like we're yeah. you know we're now consolidating all of this important information and organizing in a way where you don't have to go to the the, the visitor doesn't have to go to four different pages anymore to consume all this yes. information that's just right there and so yeah. So, you know, classic answer is it totally depends, but it, it, it there's, I, I've, 
as we've worked with, as we've worked on things, I've yet to see anything that indicates that there's too many. I think that yeah, the answer to too many is, 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 is if you're finding from a, a marketing perspective that you're, you're really, you're, you're diluting your message or you're not having a, a page that's really succinct and talking to mm -hmm. like map it back up to what's the URL of this page. It's, you know, sure. like services or whatever. Sure. And, mm -hmm. um, but if, if you, if you're, if you can't have a, a handful of sections that are speaking to, you know, why a customer would be on this page and, and solving yeah. a problem or answering a question to be on that page, it probably shouldn't, it probably shouldn't be a landing page and you should probably rethink what, where that lives hierarchically and what that actually yeah. means to a visitor to answer their question. So fair enough. So the, yeah. Okay. It, th maybe the question is, can you have too few? And the answer is yeah. If you're putting all your eggs in the homepage basket as people have done for so long, and not just kind of said, well, wait a minute, why do we just have to focus everything on their homepage? Because to your point, right. SEO is sure. If we look at our Google Analytics, does a lot of organic traffic come through people's homepage traditionally? Sure, but only because we're working from the old mindset in most cases, right? And the mindset needs to be, that isn't the only entry point to our, to our site. In fact, that might be the least, um, you know, the one we want to have people show up to the least because that means they've come to us for whatever reason that we weren't necessarily maybe even optimizing for. We'd prefer that someone that wanted to do X search for X and got to the landing page that talks about X. If you land up on a homepage, right. you're going to, you're one more click away from where you want to be. So direct correlation, like you said, to search engine optimization for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, you just, you just, sort of triggered something for me because the, we, we in terms of in terms of thinking about customers and verticals um i think that you know if you're a let's just say a, a service professional services b2b company or if you're i don't know a software company um sure. you know where where does this where does how do you answer this question and the answer to this question is if you're a B2B or a software company, whatever, that you want to have a page that can map back to your audience, right? And that can, and we're, yes. incidentally, I mean, we're working on this internally, right? Like we're trying to talk to our audiences more specifically on these landing pages so that, hey, I can talk to, um, you know, a, a customer A and, the, 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 the entire vibe of the page from pictures to copy yeah. talks to them specifically. And then, Oh, take it a step further. Are my customers consumer packaged goods? Are they, you know, direct to consumers? Well, you know, take it a step further and whether where that lives hierarchically, but we can map that from an SEO perspective to, you know, yeah. uh, consumer packaged goods companies looking for marketing optimization software, marketing yeah. automation software, whatever. And that helps you from a search perspective, create that sort of like that pillar content and that landing page. And then you can start to spider off and, you know, build up that content. But, you know, strategically that's, that's, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of what we do and how we, how we structure those things. Um, Again, sure. this is just audiences, but it can be audiences, services, yeah, whatever offerings. If you're an organization, you know, it can be advocacy and campaigns and things like that. But whatever, whatever you're doing as a, a company or an entity, you want those landing pages to map back to, you know, let's just call it your mission or your yeah, um, you know, your your sort of statement and your goals as a as a as a business. Right, so, that's a great point. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So we've talked about just briefly about how we want to think about the actual Google search results page is some in some ways your new homepage in some ways and people have sort of thought about this and talked about this a little over time. But I think now more than ever, if you're not thinking about how people are taking in your content on the search results page and therefore not clicking through, 
examine that because you want to be represented well there. Secondly, we said your homepage maybe should be dropped down hierarchically to be level with your landing pages because it really is just one of several landing pages. You might not be able to have too many, but you can definitely have too few. One or two, it's probably too few. If you just have a homepage and that's the only page you're really focusing on and trying to please everybody with, that's not where you want to be. Right. Um, and search allows people to enter your site across all optimized landing pages, which is way better than just coming through your homepage. Now, yeah. so those are two yeah. great points. Now, here's the third thing I thought we might talk about today too is let's go to the homepage. Let's go to your actual homepage. And while we might not want to say you got to have a hero that's this many pixels high and, you know, let's not do that. But let's talk about what the elements of a successful homepage are and, and you know, outside of copy and visuals, the, the, the philosophies we need to sort of be thinking about um, for the homepage. One is that, that we're talking about ourselves is trying to make that connection. And, this, and let's, let's put a caveat in here that this is actually relates not just to your homepage homepage, but to all those landing pages. This should be, these should be things you're considering across all of them. And one of them is, and you, you, you brought it up for a split second already, is your homepage shouldn't be telling the world what you do. Your landing page doesn't have to tell the world what you do. You can convey that through talking to the customer or the member or your constituents, whatever they may be, in their own words, in their language, talking about how you will solve their problems, right? So do you want to expand on that just a little bit, Zach? As to, it's so easy to talk about. It's a little harder to, to, to pull off. To expand the customer's problems? Yeah, just to talk about them and not talk about yourself, right? I mean, that's just, uh, you know, that, that's easy for me to sit here and say it. It's a little harder to to pull off yeah. and what are some so, of your thoughts about how best to maybe do that? I think the, you know, one of the compositions that we look at and you've said is, you know, focusing on um, the awareness, interest, desire, action, right? Um, sure. Yeah. That's right. One way. That's one, that's one way to give yourself a uh, framework, if you will. Um, that's a little broader um, something that we've, been working on um, as well is, and we 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 can put up a graphic for this too. Um, for both of these, I think is uh, the 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 to to tell the story and to solve those customer problems. Like you said, is talk about your customer, yeah. not yourself, right? And talk about the need of that customer. Talk about the problem of that customer talk about guide that customer through the solution, give them a yeah. clear plan to how they can solve that problem and solve that question, answer that solution. And then, you know, then give them, then give them an opportunity to do something, right. Some sort of engagement. Um, and and yeah. furthermore, lastly, like justify that, like, Hey, we've, we've, we're great at doing this. We've, won awards, we've, we've got customers, testimonials, whatever you're talk about your successes, list your clients, very typical brand bar, but like it, the power of the power of, and more and more specifically, if this is a landing page for a services company, like if I'm going back to my example, uh, you know, direct to consumer. Yeah. I, and I'm a direct to consumer, some company. And I see that, Oh, you've worked with, you've worked with Gillette. You've worked with P and G. You've worked mm -hmm. with Colgate. You've worked, oh, wow. Okay, well, these are like-minded brands that are in my category that I can yeah. trust and know, even if you're not a tier one CPG, but like you're you're maybe some sort of startup or whatever, but it's like, well, that that's super powerful, right? Um, and, 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 and I think that, um, you know, that, that composition in terms of how you can solve that problem. And there's, you know, there's a, a gazillion ways to do this. Like you said, it's, there's, there's copy, there's, there's, there's empathy, there's, there's design and, and there's, there's storytelling through the, 
the, the visuals and, and, and the actual lens, whether that's, you know, uh, photography or something like that. Sure. So there's a lot, lot of ways to build the, build this case and really solve those problems that are in addition to the framework, the copy, you know, they, there's a lot of things that are really like that, that really bring this whole thing together, not just one. So. Yeah. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. And we talked, I mean, and, and again, I mean, the point is um, if your landing pages, your home pages, if it's, if they're just self-serving, right. If they're, if they're, if you're just talking about yourself and saying, well, people want to know what we do. That's why they're at our homepage. Um, okay. That's true. That checks like the most basic rudimentary box. And that's things we've talked about too. Number one is when people come to your homepage, they shouldn't be confused landing page. They can't be confused as to what you're trying to tell them or what you do. If you're confusing them by saying, we craft, you know, digital experiences for the new age of whatever, like, how about, you know, we'll help you with your digital marketing, you know, like keep it a little simpler. Don't let right. people right. get confused by what you actually do. So you want to have that be a part of it. What are you trying to tell me? This page is about, telling you X. Okay, great. But be, but the minute they know they're on the right page, that emotional draw, that emotional connection needs to happen, right? So if you offer uh, social media uh, marketing services, right? You might not say, well, we do this and we do social marketing. We'll send the, ta uh, the post for you. We'll write the post for you. Uh, we do this for 50 other clients. That might sound great. But what if you just said, do you ever wonder if um, you're reaching the right people on social media? Do you ever look at your social media metrics and wonder how you should be changing what you do around your campaigns to make them better? Those are just two wildly different approaches. And you can see just, it seems intuitive to me that by saying, yeah, those are the two things that kind of keep me up at night. And maybe you could name 10 more, but the minute you pull them in and you go, oh, you get me right? It's like any kind right. of starting any kind of relationship. You get me. It's not just about you. It's about how you get me. Uh, that's, you know, that's how you pull people in. And it's also a differentiator because as you look at your competitor's site, every section of their landing pages or home pages that all they're doing is talking about themselves. That's your opportunity to go. We're going to have that section. We're going to talk about our customers. Right. Um, so I feel like that's, that's huge. I mean, again, easy to sit here and talk about it but it is, uh, it's harder to do. And if you need to hire people out to help you with that, uh, that's a good idea too, because sometimes you can be too close to your own business to make the calls on what those things are. And if you haven't done yeah, your audience right. research, right, if you haven't done your audience research and you haven't heard from, you know, voice of the customer kind of stuff and using their own words back to them, then you're missing an opportunity too. But, um, I think that those are some huge takeaways uh, for your homepage. I want to go back to one more thing you said too. Um, there's a four piece sort of formula that's pretty basic, but we use it when we talk about the sales funnel. We use it when we talk about building pages. I just want to go back to it real quick is the um, awareness, right? First, then we build interest in what we're doing. The customer gets a desire to work with us. And the last part is action, A-I-D-A. Uh, and if you're thinking about everything you do in pulling someone through that process, um, you're going to have a winner as well. A lot of times when we're writing copy, we say each sentence we're writing is just getting the person reading it to read the next sentence. Same thing with your homepage, right? We're trying to pull people through the page with a story to get them where we want them to go or landing page, especially that might have a call to action in it somewhere. A lead gen right. page supplies right. all of it. So. So I think those were sort of the three big things we wanted to cover today in the anatomy of homepage and actually uh, not talk about the real estate on your homepage because let's face it, uh, there isn't really one, right? Uh, there's your landing pages and your homepage is one of them. There's Google and then there's how you approach it. So um, maybe this is a topic we could even discuss in a, in a second part podcast at some point because there's probably plenty to talk about, but um, those are some really big points today to cover, Zach. Did you, is there anything else you wanted to close on uh, as we wrap up or? Next time I want to talk about uh, left and right ventricles of the heart, actually, because. 
<laughs> Anatomy. <Okay. Right. laughs> um, there you go. Uh, nice. Um, nice. Okay. No, I'm just All right. The uh, no, I, I think that's great. That that should sum it up. And hopefully, um, you know, we can uh, uh, as as part of this, I think we can provide. Uh, uh, we should provide a people a link to um, a couple of those resources in the um, in the comments below and on the uh, yeah on the podcast page uh, for that. That would be that would be great, just so that they have those. Um, and okay. uh, we look forward to if anyone has anything that uh, they want us to uh, uh, actually just opine on and just you know see does is it matching up to um the this sort of formula uh and feel the flow of it uh please re please reach out to yeah. um myself or chris we'd love to just take a look at it we love asserting our uh, our our opinions and years of experience so let us yeah. know we'd love to hear about it yeah yeah i agree that's great um yeah so with that we'll close out this episode of the web marketing insights podcast uh this is chris Bonney signing off with zach wilson from gulo we hope to see you guys again real soon and thanks for tuning in take care hi everybody thanks for checking out the podcast today uh go to gulosolutions.com to learn more about us subscribe to our newsletter uh also if you can hit subscribe on our channel here on youtube uh, that would be great as well 